Hello again, I am Blunty, and that's my tubby ass donning a pair of Oculus Rift Virtual Reality goggles. And the one I'm plonking down under my fat head is special. It's a prototype, a high-def edition actually. Unlike the existing dev kit versions that went out to Kickstarter backers, that some of you may already be familiar with, which all had 720p screens, this one is smashing full-on high-def 1080p goodness right into my face. Just quickly for the unfamiliar, at the most basic level, the Oculus Rift is a head-mounted display with built-in accelerometer motion sensors, and the team of clever nerds which built it hope to, finally, bring nifty three-dimensional virtual reality technology into the consumer market in both an affordable and practical way. And it's quite different to some of the recent head-mounted displays that have been available commercially. Like, for example, Sony's unit here, which used two separate little displays, one for each eye, to feed the user a 3D image. Sony screens are the little kind that some cameras use for eyepiece viewfinders. And Sony are quite good at these little screens, so it's actually quite good. The Oculus, though, is a bit cleverer. The Oculus uses a single, large screen, the kind you find on modern smartphones. But instead of it just looking like a smartphone screen held right in front of your face, a 3D image is achieved by splitting the screen in half, rendering two different viewpoints for each half of that screen, and then feeding each half separately to either eye with simple lenses in the headset. And it's this combination of large screen, lenses, and a special way of rendering the source feed that means the image you experience inside the Oculus actually covers a very wide field of view, meaning instead of seeing a kind of floating TV screen kind of effect like you get from the likes of the Sony headset, the Oculus is a much, much more immersive experience. It fills almost your entire field of view. I went into my Oculus experience thinking I knew just what to expect. I mean, after all, I'm a pretty clever lifelong nerd. I've had my head in virtual reality headsets before, and I knew all about the technology that the Oculus Rift is built on top of. So what I expected was to come away saying, yeah, that's pretty cool. It's nice to see some VR in high res, but come on, only dedicated gamers and gadget nerds will ever actually buy this thing, and only a portion of them will keep using it once the initial new toy novelty wears off, and then we'll all forget about it and move on and start pining away of why isn't virtual reality here properly yet. But the instant I put the headset on, I began to properly understand what Oculus are trying to do, and my cynicism immediately began to erode under soft waves of practical insight. My experience wasn't without flaws. The high-def prototype I was testing didn't have finalized lenses fitted, so things got a bit blurry at the edges, and there was some pincushion distortion going on at the sides that didn't really belong there, and the screen they were using in the prototype had a fair amount of motion smearing going on that any gamer worth his salt would find entirely unacceptable. But let's be clear, none of those things were representative of what the final retail product will be. As I keep reminding you, this was a prototype of a 1080p version, something they pieced together by hand just to make sure they could make it work properly. The Oculus guys have been constantly fiddling and fine-tuning and upgrading components as better screens or better sensors become available or become price practical to switch to. Also, they can find out what's going to deliver the best experience once Joe Public can actually buy one. So, all of those prototype issues aside, it was still an eye-opening experience, literally and figuratively. The sensation of being enveloped within the environment was surprisingly convincing. Unfortunately, they didn't have a regular screen set up, so I couldn't film what was being shown to me, as I'd hoped I could when they invited me along to this personal demo, so you guys have utterly no idea what I'm actually doing here. To you, I'm just a tubby dork swiveling his head around with a screen stapled to his face. So let me at least try and give you an idea of what I'm experiencing here. The first demo I tried was at the side of an erupting volcano. It was all rendered, beautifully I might add, in the latest Unreal Engine 4, and it was replete with craggy slopes, an expansive environment that seemed to go off for miles into the distance, glowing lava flows, smoky atmosphere, and gigantic billowing plumes of volcanic smoke and ash and lava bombs rose above me. I was able to freely look around and control my speed and direction of travel with a regular game controller, but also affect my pitch and roll and yaw by moving my head around. At the bottom of the slope where I began, there was a kind of temple thing with large, imposing stone statues. It 
was spectacular. The 3D effect was entirely convincing. The sense of depth was natural feeling and instinctive. It was just as you usually kind of experience the world. There was absolutely no sense of weird parallax exaggeration or inconsistent flatness. It was entirely natural feeling. So I flew up the side of the volcano and once at the top I turned and looked back down the slopes at its spectacular molten lava flows and again the feeling of actually being them, existing, properly existing within, not just observing through a window of a screen, but existing within this computer generated environment. The lofty height, the slope of the volcano, the smoke and the ash, it was all compellingly authentic feeling, it was amazing. Of course, it still looks like a video game, but the feeling of proper immersion is quite enchanting and unlike anything I've ever experienced before. The second demo placed me within a much more realistic feeling location, that of a movie theatre. The rows of seats, the screen, the curtains, and I could even turn around and see the beam of light from the projector shining through the thin dust in the air. Now sure, it's not the most practical application for something like this, but as a tech demo to show off a fun and much more familiar environment than an exploding volcano, it worked wonderfully to sort of translate that immersive sense of being there. I felt like I could put my feet up on the chair in front of me, it was wonderful. Again, this was unlike any other head-mounted display I've ever tried, and I've been keeping my eyes on virtual reality tech since way back in the early 90s, when my local comic book store got a pair of these enormous bad boys, which by today's standards are primitive. They are to the Oculus Rift what a horse and buggy is to a Bugatti Veyron. The Oculus Rift, aside from offering up an image large enough to fill a large portion of your field of view, also offers up the absolute best fastest, most responsive motion tracking I've ever experienced. And you can thank smartphones for the rapid progress in development and miniaturization of the nifty technology that makes all this possible. Actually, that goes for the high-res screen technology too. It's all come from smartphone development. Moving my head around was super smooth. Now, the prototype is still quite large and relatively heavy, although I must say it's not uncomfortably so. But the mass of it does tend to affect how you move your head just a bit. I found myself prone to making more deliberate, smooth movements rather than the more sort of twitchy, natural movements. Uh, it's, it's kind of like the difference between how you would move your head around while playing sort of a paintball game versus standing at a cliff's edge, looking over an ocean, taking in the panoramic view. You know, one is just a bit more slow and deliberate than the other. But in any case, the image was super reactive to my movement, and if there was any lag time, it was small enough for my brain to not even notice, even when I tried deliberately sensing it. And it's this combination of a large, immersive visual field and natural, practically lag-free head tracking systems that is the one-two punch combo that really makes the Oculus Rift work better than everything that has come before it. I think it's one of those things you really have to try before you really get it. I mean, you can intellectually comprehend the experience like I did before I walked into that room, but once your face is inside those goggles, it instantly stops becoming an intellectual exercise about some now common smartphone type technology being used in an uncommon way, and instead becomes an enveloping, instinctive, surprisingly natural feeling experience. And I hope that once the Oculus Rift VR unit is in the world as a finalized product, there are lots of demo units in stores and special traveling events to get people's heads in it. Seeing really is believing in this instance. Now, I spoke to the Oculus team at some length about the technology, where they're heading, what they're hoping and planning, both within the gaming sphere and outside of it, and it was a very encouraging conversation. Now right now, the development's pretty much all about PC gaming, but the technology is built in such a way that it would actually be very easy for devices like the upcoming game consoles, the Xbox One and PlayStation 4, to implement native compatibility quite easily. There's no need for two separate image feeds or any special connectors or converter boxes or any other connecting hardware. The Oculus runs from a standard HDMI signal, and all the sending device needs to do is render this sort of twin bubble looking feed in a single image instead of the standard image. There's no quirky resolutions involved, there's no image stacking or interlacing like current HDMI based 3D feeds need to be, just a simple and easy to implement render system. And if I understand correctly, it doesn't even need that much more processing overhead. So you won't need a special uber beastie graphics card in your machine to get in on the Oculus goodness. In fact, it's so efficient, I'm told that smartphones even have all the grunt they need to drive the Oculus display properly. 
and the motion tracking system signal is fed out of the headset via a standard USB connection. So implementing full-on head tracking virtual reality on a game console is also super easy to get running too. And of course, that same motion tracking data can be used by the sound engine of the game or application or whatever to give you sound environments that properly track in three dimensions also, and thus deepening the feeling of immersion. So, I walked into the Oculus meeting room expecting a cool demo of a pretty nifty gimmick. And I walked out of that room pestering the guys about when the release date will be for a final retail version and how much I should be stashing aside for that day because I'm gonna want one of these things. There is no question in my mind at all anymore. The answers, by the way, in both cases were, we're not sure yet. On the price side of things, they want to make it as affordable as possible to make sure they can penetrate the market as quickly and easily as possible. Get this thing in as many people's hands as fast as possible, and to do that, they have to make it as affordable as possible. And considering the screen and accelerometer hardware at the core of this system is only getting cheaper and more available thanks to the smartphone boom, I honestly believe it'll hit at a very acceptable price for most of us. And as for when, well, they were a little bit vague about that too, but there was much enthusiasm and determination in the carefully measured hopes that it will be on shelves before we're eating plum puddings and unwrapping festive gifts later this year. The retail version will also be smaller and lighter, of course. Prettier, too, I expect. And when I asked, they also said they're working on ways to accommodate people who need classes, but haven't settled on a solution just yet. So I think you can safely count on yours truly as being an early adopter for the Oculus Rift. My brief playtime was still more than enough to move this thing from fun gimmick to exciting accessory that'll push game immersion to a level that some of us gamers have been aching for since the early 90s. I also made sure I grabbed their business cards, so I'm going to pester them every few weeks for a locked-in release date and a review unit, because, you know, can't hurt to ask, right? <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.